Hello. One of the biggest things that features in the daily notices at Archbishop Holgate School is a quirky feature that informs our school community about the different days that are being marked or celebrated. This can veer from the sublime to the ridiculous, as the saying goes. On Tuesday of this week, it is National Kissing Day, although how that's going to be participated in at a two metre distance, I'm really not sure. On Wednesday, it is National Hydration Day, a worthy and important issue. This is then followed by National Pralines Day on Thursday, at which point I'll say no more. Some of these days are clearly created by interest groups and industry, but others are far more essential and worthier of reflection. On Sunday the 20th, it was World Refugee Day. This is an international day organised every year on this date by the United Nations. It is designed to celebrate and honour refugees from around the world. The day was first established on the 20th of June 2001 in recognition of the 50th anniversary of the 1951 Convention relating to the status of displaced persons. The current global pandemic has not stemmed the flow of refugees and other displaced people. Protracted conflict and political crises meant that by mid-2020, more than 80 million people in the world had been forced to leave their homes. The Syrian and Venezuelan refugee crises remain the biggest ones in the world. The UN estimates that every minute of every day, 20 people leave everything behind to escape war, persecution or terror somewhere. Refugees have been a feature of life, though, for thousands of years. The Bible features stories of refugees throughout its pages, both in the Old and New Testament. At the end of the Christmas story, we hear of Mary and Joseph having to flee Bethlehem with the infant Jesus and go to neighbouring Egypt for fear of the murderous persecution of King Herod. The theme of the Refugee Day campaign this year is calling for the greater inclusion of refugees in health systems, schools and sport. The UN argues that only by working together can we recover from the pandemic. There is a danger that in a world preoccupied with coronavirus and the difficulties of overcoming it, people are tended, tempted to be focused on their own lives, their own families and their own nations. They may see people who are outside their own group or their own country, sometimes as threats to their health, to be expelled and excluded, sometimes as a burden, and always of people to whom they have no responsibility. So, what can we do here in York? How can we respond? Some of you may be involved with or want to find out more about the charities Refugee Action York and City of Sanctuary and their work with refugees, asylum seekers and migrants in the local area. Some of you may feel that writing to your MP about these issues is the way forward. The answer will be different for different people, but perhaps there might also be something for all of us to consider. I said before that the Bible tells the story of many refugees. It also tells the story of God's response to Throughout its pages, there are numerous instructions pointing towards open-hearted generosity as God's required response to the stranger. It is expected that they should be welcomed in the same way that one welcomes a friend or family member. The measure of welcome is that generosity should be radical and overflowing. I would encourage that to be our default position with all those we encounter, regardless of them being a refugee or not. That we should seek to be welcoming and genuinely interested in all those who cross our paths, whether that's here in school, in the supermarket, or just out and about. And so I pray that we might all live out and model to others a Christ-like love of everyone we meet. Bless you all.